What? Alex, we have a problem. What? Did something break? No, my beats don't sound sick enough when the T-tops are down. I can't hear the music over all the wind. That's pretty heavy. I might have a solution for that. I've got a box. This is heavy. What's in the box? The solution to all our problems. It's a center console subwoofer adapter. It used to be made by Blacktop Racing. We what? get an eight inch subwoofer in there. We can turn all the other speakers way up so they, cause they don't have to reproduce any bass frequencies. That way we'll be able to hear the rest of the speakers without it sounding like someone screaming at you through a telephone or a tin can. Plus, comes with a Kenwood carbon fiber woofer that requires no grill. Say what? Look at that. I think we need to yeet the center console out. Yeet? <laughs> There's a couple issues with this. It's the wrong color, so we're gonna have to paint it. I don't know who would know how to paint interior pieces. Yeah, we're gonna have to watch a video on that. Yeah. <laughs> but we'll have to paint it beechwood let it dry. Luckily it's like 95 degrees out. <laughs> and then we'll have to wire in an amplifier, route the speaker wires through the console in a way that, you know, won't be seen by everybody. So uh, I guess we just get started. Okay, so what I'm doing here is I am getting my can of uh, my prep. This is gonna take any of the, like the oils and like anything on the surface off so that I get a a clean slate for um, painting all of the surfaces. I'm also going to be painting these and I did not, we didn't scratch the surface on this because it's brand new. We don't need to do that, but these have been textured and now they are going to be getting clean. Just for extra precaution, not like we're too concerned about what the inside of the box is going to look like, but I'm gonna make sure I wrap the wire just to kind of keep it clean. Good. Yeah, it looks like it. All right, what are you doing now? So I'm gonna be drilling the holes using this template that came with the box. I cut it out with box cutter because that was the easiest way. So we have this taped on here, but I'm still gonna hold it. All right, you guys, before we go any further, don't forget to like this video and subscribe to our channel and hit the bell notification so that you get all of the notifications when we upload videos. In order to continue the project, the obvious progression involved actually disassembling the interior a little bit and taking the center console out. At that point, Dan helped remove the glove box door and all the associated hardware. Then we tried to install the box into the console. Put that through there. It seems like a tight fit. Sometimes you just gotta spit on it to make it fit. Um. 
I don't think spitting on it is going to make that fit. I think we're going to have to cut something. Well, good thing this wasn't real beech wood. Yeah, right? Like, imagine us <laughs> spending all that time and money getting beech wood stuff, and then, of course... I did, the guy wanted 150 bucks for this piece. I was... You should not do this on the car. No, I'm not going to do it on the car. I agree, you should not do that on the car. Maybe that'll work. I don't know why you wouldn't have just used a sawzall, but okay. Uh, I don't know where mine is. Oh. I mean, I do know where it is. It's not here. Oh. Well, that's handy. This did work, though. It just looks like garbage. Who's going to see this? Except for all of those people. Yeah, all of these people <laughs> are going to see it. Shh, don't tell anybody. So I'm just going to add while he's doing that. This is how not to do it, but he's in a hurry, so this is what we got. Told you no one will see it. <laughs> After you stuff it flush, there's bolts at the bottom of it. If you make your own, you're going to want to put these bolts in so you have something to clamp it into place. Just going to thread them. A little bit and then I will have to get a screwdriver on the other side and a wrench on this side to actually tighten them. All right we need like six hands for this job now. Uh yeah well yeah I got some ham. I'm gonna hold Phillips and then I'm gonna take my hand. You cheater. There you go. Seems good. All right, gave it a couple clackies. Looks like a speaker goes in there. Yeah. I need your hold. I have to get to this edge. Okay, now I'm gonna set it down here. I got a trim ring. Let me show you guys a little trick I use to get wires through. Because the next step is wiring the amplifier, which means we got to run a positive to the battery. Well, I just found a rubber grommet. Took my drill, drilled through that thing. Then I stuck a bucket handle in there. On the other side, I electrical taped a positive wire to the bucket handle. Let's see what happens. Ooh, I see a little bit of it. Oh yeah. What? Look at that. Bam! Now that I've pulled the wire through, I am putting a fuse on it. If you're going to run a big positive wire to an amplifier, it's really important that you fuse it because a wire such as this could melt and start a fire. So you want the fuse to be near the battery and to blow in case anything goes wrong. You know, we wouldn't want another Fierro fire situation. I hear there are there's a bad rumor about that. All right, so after I ran that power wire, I took it up and ran it along the center console. And then I ran the 
RCA output wires that connect to the deck over here. And now I have to run a trigger wire for the amplifier. Now, all this kind of information is available pretty freely. This is the not special to the Fiero, so I'm not gonna spend a super amount of time on it, but you know, you'll find any basic amp installation, you know, setup will teach you how to do these parts if there's anything that you're confused about. One thing, you always wanna to try to run where the wires won't eventually get chafed and short out. Not sure that this is the perfect place for them, but you know, it'll probably work. Probably be good enough. I'm concerned about the amount of dirt that you've gotten on yourself just working with the interior. You have not been working on the engine. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's, uh, it's uh, one of those hot, sweaty, evil days that ruin everything. Where's the amplifier? Maybe the wires wound up getting tidied up just a little bit. Everything's working together. Really good thing to know is that if you have a subwoofer, see, I don't really want to make a big boom, 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 boom type sound with the car. We just want to be able to hear it. Well, low frequencies take the most energy to reproduce. So if you have small speakers like the Fiero does in the front and the rear, if it's reproducing any bass frequencies, there's no possible way that you're gonna get any type of like real volume, especially to overcome the wind noise and the loud exhaust and the supercharger of this. Now, I'm gonna cut this off around 160 Hertz. So that's a ton of low end. And then I only make these speakers reproduce 160 Hertz and up. Honestly, they probably can get to be about double the volume. So we're getting a really full, enjoyable sound. I'm super proud of it. It's really clean looking and anybody can do this. You can see that it's just a couple pieces of MDF glued together. So you guys can do that at home and then use the template to cut the hole and just stretch some vinyl fabric around it, which is all they did. So hope that that helps you guys. Well, now he's hot and tired and he forgot to tell you to like and subscribe. So you should probably do that. Hey, you guys. Alex has finished installing the subwoofer and I'm taking the opportunity to listen to it on my own. You guys know that meme that was like, if you were put in front of this big sound system and you could play one song, what would that song be? I know what song I would play. Excuse me, that's not gonna happen. And no, not that either. No copyright monster. All right, you guys, so that's gonna conclude it for the end of this episode. I wanna thank you guys for tuning in. Make sure if you haven't already, hit the subscribe button, hit the bell icon so you can get notifications every time we upload. And if you don't know, we still have an Etsy shop up and we would love if you went and supported us and bought some of our merchandise. It's always very simple, but we really like making it for you guys and seeing you guys wear it. So if you do also have merch, make sure you tag us on Instagram and there will be the handle down in the description. I love you guys. Peace out.